In today's exercise, we're going to be talking about something that is brand spanking new to CSS, and that is CSS variables. And, and now I know what you're saying, Wes, we've had variables in SAS forever. This is not new, but it is new, uh, smart Alec, because CSS variables can be updated with JavaScript, meaning that when you update a variable in CSS, everywhere on the page that that variable is referenced will update itself. With SAS, you define them at compile time and then it gets compiled and you cannot change it. So let's take a look here. I've got uh, three variables, spacing, blur, and base color. And when I change one of those, like spacing, it will just immediately update wherever that variable is changed on the page. Same with blur. I'm only using that on this image right here. But as I change it, it's going to update. And then finally, base color. I'm using it for the background of this image as well as the color of this JS highlight here. So when I change that color, it updates everywhere it's referenced on the actual page. So let's jump in. Let's take a quick look at our HTML here. I've got uh, H2, which has a span of the class of highlight or HL around JS. Then I've got a label and input for the spacing, which has a min of 10, a max of 200. And we've got a range, which does our blur. And we've got a input type of color, which gives you that kind of cool color picker. You're going to get a bit of a different color picker off your own windows or something like that, but it will always open up uh, whatever that default color picker is on your system. Then we've got the image and we're styling it. Now let's actually jump into uh, opening this up in our browser. Let's jump into some CSS variables first because we need to understand how they work before we can write any of our JavaScript to update them. So the way that CSS variables work is that you declare them on some sort of element, or in our case, we're going to declare it on root, which is sort of the highest level that you can get, very similar to declaring it on the HTML element. And here's where we're going to set our default values for those variables. So we're going to have a base variable that's going to be set to the West Boss yellow color. We're going to have a spacing variable, which is going to be defaulted to 10 pixels. And we're going to give ourselves a blur variable, which is also going to be defaulted to 10 pixels. Now we've defined these variables and we can go ahead and start using them. So let's grab our image that's on the page here and give it a padding of. And now when you want to use a variable in CSS, you say var and you pass it the uh, spacing. Now these dash dash, I know you're like, what, what the hell are you doing, Wes? That is the standard in CSS. That's how you do it. It's normally like dollar in SAS or something like that. But in CSS, it's a dash dash. Don't yell at me. That's that's how they decided to go about it so that it would be backwards compatible with all the CSS that were uh, older browsers. Inspect and look, the padding is based on the spacing and it's giving us some, you can see the green there. Okay, that works. Uh, then we want to work on the background is going to be our variable base, which is going to be that yellow color. Okay, looking good. Image take a second to load. Then if I were to change this spacing to 50 pixels and refresh, you'll see it's much bigger back down to 10. It's going to take that variable from spacing. I don't need to redeclare it. And then finally, we are going to give it a filter, which is a blur. And we want to use the variable blur. Good. Then we want to work with this JS highlight here. So we'll say anything with a class of highlight is going to have the color of variable base. Great. So anywhere now we're referencing this color right here and right here, it's going to be changed. If I were just to change this to maybe like red everywhere on the page gets it. You get the point, right? It's a variable and you reference it and it's going to be used. Now, how do we write some JavaScript to update those? Well, let's go ahead and do that. First thing that we need to do is we need to select all three of these inputs right here so that when they change, we can then update the CSS variables, which will in, in turn update the colors on the screen. So we'll scroll down to our script tags here and we will select all of our inputs on the page. So const inputs equals, and I'm going to use document dot query selector all. And our selector here is going to be dot controls input. So that's going to select all the inputs on the page. Real quick aside, um, in the last video, I, I said that uh, query selector will give you an array. And, and what I really meant is it gives you something called a node list. If I run this in my console here, it returns to you 
what actually like looks like an array. It's It's got square brackets, it has index items, it has a length, but it's not an array. And the difference between a node list and an array is that an array has all kinds of methods for dealing with an array like map and reduce and uh, all of the good ones. And if you open up the prototype for the node list, you see we only have a couple methods here, entries for each keys and values and then a couple other little things here. Whereas if I had an array like one, two, three, var x equals, and then I have x, and I open that up and look at the prototype of that. Oh, look at all this good stuff. There's everything that you're used to. So um, sometimes you'll see people converting their node list to an array. And in, in some future exercises, we're gonna have to do that. But in our case, what we're going to use to loop over these inputs is the for each method, which has just recently been added to the node list. So it's not necessary for us to convert it to an array uh, unless you're using an older browser that does not support having the for each on it. So what we want to do now is create our function called handle update function called handle update. And we'll just console log this dot value for each of them. And then we'll listen for a change event on each of the inputs. So we'll say inputs dot for each. And then we want to loop over each one. We have an input. I'm going to use an arrow function just to be nice and clean here. We'll say input dot add event listener. We want to listen for the change event. And when that is called, we're going to call handle update. Good. Now, when we open up our console here and I change one of these and I move and let go 75, 102, 167, you see my blur will change as well. So I'm seeing the values change whenever I change the value of one of these. But um, one little thing is you notice that as I drag it around, it doesn't actually trigger a change. So what we can do is we can also listen for the mouse move update, which when you move over it, looks like it's, it's going to trigger every single time. And there's some flags that you could set where when you click set it to true and when you click off, set it to false, we're going to keep it really simple here where, uh, when I move the value it's also going to trigger a change rather than just when uh, I let go. So we're listening for change and mouse move, and it's going to call handle update regardless of which one that happened. Now let's go into this handle update here and let's work on getting the values out of it. So the first thing we need to know is what is the suffix of the value that we're working with? Because if we go up to our variables here, um, this base doesn't have a suffix. It's just a hex code or RGB value that's going to come out of the input. But the spacing and the blur, they're going to give us values like 10, but they need to be 10 PX. So what I've done is I've attached some additional info to each of these inputs right here, where I've created a data attribute. Again, a data attribute is just an attribute that you've made up. You just have to prefix it with data dash something. And then I've put on a sizing or a suffix value here called PX, PX, and then this one I haven't. So what we can do in here is we can say const suffix equals this dot data set because what is this dot data set? Let's take a quick look at that a second. Console log this dot data set. And if I change it, you see a data set is an object that will contain all of the data attributes from that specific element. In this case, it's just sizing. But if I were to go up to uh, this first one here, and like a data dash name equals Wes and a data dash cool equals, and like we'll put a poop in there. Now let's see what we got. We got a poop. Sure do have a poop. Here we go. Open it up. We've got an object of all of the things. So data set is just an object that already, you don't have to select it. You don't have to use any attribute selectors from it. It will just take everything that has data dash on that element and put it into a nice tidy little object for you. So we want to go back down to this. We'll say suffix equals this dot data set dot. And what did we what did we call it? Sizing. Good. And then for some of them, they don't have a sizing like the color one. So I'm just going to say or nothing, because if I if I don't leave it at that, we're going to append undefined on the end. And that's not what we want. So it's so or nothing. It's just going to fall back. So let's console log the suffix. 
see what we're working with here. So pixels, good. Pixels for that one. And then when I hover over this one, you see nothing. And that's because there is no suffix for the hex code. Now what we need to do is update the actual variable. So how do you, how do you select a variable? Uh, and then the way that that works is we are going to select our entire document, which is our root here. And we're going to set a property of base spacing or blur. And you'll notice that we use the name here, name spacing, name blur and name base. So we go down here and let's just console log this dot name. Blur spacing base. Good. So we say document dot document element dot style dot set property. And we're going to set the property of usually dash dash base or dash dash spacing. But those things are going to be variable. So we can use, because we're using backticks here, we can plop that variable name in this dot name. And then it's going to be set to this dot value. Now that's not going to get us all the way there. And I'll, I'll show you just a sec here. Let's open up our elements panel and let's change our blur. You see what, what's happening here? The blur value is changing, but there is no pixels being appended to the end. And that's why we created this suffix variable. So we can tack on the suffix var variable onto the end. And now when I refresh, I switched out the image here because the other one was having trouble loading and I change one of these, you'll see that the value is being updated 124 PX blur 10 PX. As you change it, it's going to be immediately updated. Let's double check that the color one works as well. Perfect. So that's today's exercise. Again, when you use a CSS variable, you can then update that variable on any element and any selectors that are inside of that element that reference that variable will be using it. So one other thing you could do is you could also scope them to be just on a specific div. So if I were to take this H2 and add an attribute of style equals, and I want to change the variable base to be a badass. Oh, look what happened there. So even though this base variable is right here, because I've specified the variable lower down, and inside of that, this highlight is referencing a variable. This one wins out over this one, much like the CSS cascade, the closer one will always win out. And I can go ahead and keep changing this value. And this one's not going to change because I've updated it at a lower scope. Hopefully you enjoy that. See you in the next one.